Continuing our reading in Abraham Hannibal and the Battle for the Throne by Francis Summers Cox. Today is chapter 8, the Tsar Peter's Ambassador, and the date is June 1706. Abraham reached right up to Uncle Mustafa's shoulder by now. In some ways, they were closer than Abraham had ever been with his own father. After all, the Lord of the Sea had always been so busy and so important. It was dear Uncle Mustafa who passed the wonderful news on to him very early one morning as Abraham was digging goat dung in the in and around the roses. Abraham, there's a Frank coming this evening, a very important one. Maybe he knows your Frank, that doctor, and can give you some news. Abraham had whirled around and dropped the garden fork on his foot, but he didn't even notice. A Frank? A real Frank? Maybe I can get a chance to speak to him somehow. But then a depressing thought struck him. Is he a proper Frank from the Sun King's country or one of the other kinds? There's a lot of different kind of Franks, you know, from different places, and they don't even all speak and talk the same language. Mustafa shook his head. That one I do not know. All I know is that he's so important that he's going to be allowed into the third courtyard. Abraham spent the hours till evening, when he was supposed to be getting ready for the garden party, daydreaming about the Sun King and his palace and Dr. Ponset. To tell the truth, he couldn't remember exactly what the French doctor looked like anymore, not so as to see him in his mind's eye. But he did remember that he was funny and kind and took a lot of trouble. And he definitely remembered his stories of the marvels of France in the Sun King's palace. Mirrors twice as tall as me, lucky, and stone images of men and animals that sprout water into the air, machines that can make books all by themselves, banquets lit by 10,000 candles. That reminded him that he was supposed to be helping track down all of the tortoises, not just chatting to the tortoise named Lucky. He hurried on with his work but soon was muttering to himself, practicing once again those French sentences that Dr. Ponset had taught him so long ago. My name is Abraham, and my father is a noble lord of Africa. The emperor of Ethiopia sends brotherly greetings to the king of the Franks. You'd better bring me luck, Lucky, he remarked to the old tortoise. Not like the last time I tried to talk to Franks and ended up on a pirate ship. At last the time came. Abraham washed and put on his best clothes, good quality baggy cotton trousers, shirt and wide sash, and a fine red woolen coat over it all, and a turban wound round his cap. Mustafa led him off the job of releasing the tortoises so that he wouldn't get dirty. Abraham stood behind one of the little chipped trees and <clears throat> that lined the paths near a fountain in the middle of the second courtyard. He was halfway down the main path that led across the court so that he'd be able to spot the Frank coming in through the greeting gate and have time to catch him before he disappeared out through the gate of happiness and into the third courtyard. Abraham waited. The great lords, no ladies of course in this Muslim land, no mixed parties here as in Ethiopia, came in and their trains of servants behind them, the long sleeves of their bright coats and waistcoats trailing them, baggy silk trousers flapping, tall turbans wound round high caps, chatting in the fancy upper-class Turkish that Abraham could barely understand, and all went out through the gate of happiness. Then at last the whisper went around, The Franks are coming! The Franks are coming! Quite a lot of slaves were gathered, in the corners of the court watching. They didn't get to see Franks very often, and it was fun to look at their outlandish clothes and wigs. At last, the little group of men came through the gate and started walking across the huge courtyard. As they came nearer along the little path, their shining clothes and huge pale wigs glimmering through the twilight, Abraham's stomach jumped. At least they were dressed like a proper Frank, like Dr. Ponset, he decided that the oldish man walking at the front with the bushy black eyebrows and clever high forehead 
was the chief and waited for the right moment. Just as the group of Franks came up to the fountain, Abraham ran out from behind his little clipped tree, bowed down to the ground first, Turkish style, and stood up. Then he gave a real Frankish bow and once again made his announcement in the French language. My father is a noble lord of Africa. The emperor of Ethiopia sends brotherly greetings to the king of the Franks. There was silence. The Franks looked at each other as if they were, weren't quite sure what they'd heard. Then the leader stepped forward, put his hand on Abraham's shoulder, and seemed to ask a question in French, which of course Abraham couldn't understand. Abraham repeated his sentences. The man rattled off some more French. Silence. Then the man turned round and called to someone in his group. A young man in Turkish clothes came forward. The leader said something to him in French, and the young man came up to Abraham and started talking in Turkish. This great lord asks why you speak of Ethiopia and the king of the Franks, and how is it that you know some words in French? Abraham started to explain about Dr. Ponset and his mission from the emperor of Ethiopia to the sun king, and about being captured in the desert, the shipwreck, and the pirates. The young man kept interrupting and asking questions and stopping Abraham while he rattled off the translations to the group of Franks. The Franks had all gathered around, listening and staring and whispering, every now and then smiling or looking astonished. Some of them even sat down on the edge of the fountain to listen. Abraham would have been embarrassed with all these grown-ups, foreigners too, concentrating on him like this. But he was so caught up in his story, so anxious to explain it all to the Franks, that he didn't have a chance to feel shy. At last, the young translator said, We must go through now to be received by the Sultan, but this great Lord asks what you want of him. Abraham slowly said, Well, since I was taken away from Dr. Ponset and was made a slave, I have wanted two things. I want to be free, and I want to go to the Emperor of France. I have given him the message from my emperor. I have to give him that message. And, and well, as, as the great Lord is a Frank, perhaps he can help me. The young Turk laughed and spoke to the rest of the group and then to Abraham again. This great Lord is not a Frank, nor are any of the others. At least they are not from France, if that is what you mean. He speaks French, but he is Russian. His name is Peter Tolstoy, and he is the ambassador of the King of Russia his special messenger to the Sultan of Turkey. Abraham suddenly felt sick in his stomach and dizzy in his head. I was hoping for so much, and now I'm back where I started. I can't bear it. I just can't bear it. Peter Tolstoy was talking to the translator. Then, through Abraham's dreadful disappointment, he heard the young Turkish man say, This great lord asked me to say that his king, or czar, whose name is Peter, has told him to find some intelligent young black boys here in Istanbul and send them to him. This great lord feels that you are capable and interesting boy and would suit the Tsar Peter very well. How would you like to go to Russia? Would I be free or, or would I be a slave? Could I be a Christian or would I have to be a Muslim? And would I be able to get to France? I must see the king of the Franks. The young man laughed again, spoke to Peter Tolstoy, and then again to Abraham. The easiest answer is the one about religion. Russia is a Christian nation, Christian country. The Tsar is a Christian king, so I'm sure he would want you to be a Christian. As for slaves in Russia, they do not always have them mm, quite as we do here in Turkey. You would be a paid servant in the palace, of the palace of the Tsar. One day, perhaps, the Tsar would give you permission to go on your own way. And yes, it's very likely that one day you might see the king of the Franks. His Majesty Tsar Peter, whose people call him Peter the Great, loves traveling to different lands, and he would certainly take a favorite servant with him. Abraham thought of the Sultan's palace, his home for nearly two years now, and of Uncle Mustafa and Lucky the Tortoise, and even of his gardening that he had come to take pride in. I've got to get used to this place. Uh, why does my life keep having to change? I keep having to leave my friends. I, I don't know where I belong. I, I even keep having to learn new languages, but if I stay here, I'll be a slave all my life. I'll end up like the chief black slave, except not as important. 
just old and lonely and sad. I'll never be a proper Christian again. I've got to be like Lahea and take a risk. If I really, really want to be free, I'll manage it somehow. This has got to be the way. This is how I'll get to the Sun King. He said aloud, I, I would like to go to Russia to the great king. The Russians, who were chattering among themselves, laughed and moved to the great gate of happiness. Peter Tolstoy patting him on the head as he passed. And that is the end of chapter 8.